Hey guys, it's Excel. With the 13.1 update right around the corner, I thought it'd be a great idea to go over all the electricity items coming out in this next update. Because let's face it, some of these items do take quite a bit of knowledge and skill to understand and use properly. Even I spent several hours learning and understanding how these things work and I'm still no expert at it. When I played Minecraft, I was never able to fully understand redstone either, so that's probably why I'm not very good at this. However, I'll do the best I can at explaining how you'll be able to create some advanced contraptions with all the tools that are coming out in this update. There's quite a lot to go over, so without further ado, let's get started. First things first, we will need to learn and understand how to create a basic form of electricity. In this case, we are going to need a generator and some wires. The generator is the main source of power for generating electricity. Obviously, it's in the name after all. In order for this to work, what you're going to want to have to do is connect this generator to a set of wires. Once you do connect the wires to the generator, you'll notice that a button will appear on the side of the generator that you connected it to. This is where things get a tiny bit weird. In this game, you don't craft buttons or pressure plates. Instead, you connect the wires to this generator to form the buttons and pressure plates yourself. Now you may have noticed I also did say pressure plates. That's because if you connect a wire to the top of the generator, it will turn into a giant pressure plate. If you stand on it, you can activate it. This doesn't just apply to you, however. You can also activate the buttons by shooting it with a bow and arrow. Even creatures have the ability to stand on the pressure plates and activate them. Alright, so now we need to complete this current. Let's start with the most basic new item coming in this update, the electric torch. Let's place this at the end of the current and make sure the wires run a full connection to the light. After that, press the button and it should light up. Now that was pretty simple. Let's try something a little more advanced. There are two pistons coming in this update. The piston and the wooden piston. They both behave just like a sticky piston does in Minecraft with one big difference. The wooden piston can push and retract one block. The normal piston can push and retract 10 blocks. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what's the point of having one piston that is weaker than the other? Well, it's simple. Let's say you want to create an entrance with some pistons, just like this one. If you use wooden pistons that can only push and retract one block, this will work flawlessly. However, if you try this with a regular piston that can push up to 10 blocks, this is where things get kind of complicated. Pushing these blocks together will make the pistons now register that there are more blocks attached to it, and it will try to retract all the blocks and pistons attached to themselves. This doesn't exactly work out well. Pushing this button again will cause the two pistons to try and retract from each other, and what will happen is your device will explode. As you can see, this is a really good reason why you need two pistons for this update. Next up we have remote sensors. If you aren't a fan of making a bunch of holes in your house to get electricity working, this might help you out. These have the ability to get electricity and travel through walls. You just need to place these on both sides of a block and it will travel right through that block. These do also have use for some vehicles in the game, but more on that later. Let's move on to some different ways to emit electricity. There are actually three new sensors coming that will be able to create an electrical path without the need of a generator. First up we have the motion sensor. Let's say you want a set of doors to open up to your house when you're coming home from a long trip of exploring. Just place this next to your doors and then hook them up with wires and as soon as you're within 10 blocks of the front of it, it will activate itself and open up those doors. And yes, creatures and NPCs can trigger them too. Next is the light sensor. This sensor works just like the motion sensor, but instead of it tracking motion, it tracks light. If there is enough light nearby, it will activate itself every 10 seconds. Finally, we have the timer sensor. This is one of my favorites. You'll notice five buttons on this thing. Let's just say you turned it on with only one light on it. This means the timer will activate itself in 10 seconds. Each time you activate a light on it, you're basically adding in an additional 10 seconds to this thing. So if you have all 5 lights on, it will take 50 seconds until this thing will emit electricity. So now that we've gone over all the different ways you can start an electricity current, 
Let's talk about some of the advanced tools. First up, we have the variable resistor. If you have ever wanted to slow down the speed of the electric current, now you can. The variable resistor has three different options. Slow, slower, and even slower. This will allow you to adjust the beat with some note blocks or create even some more advanced contraptions. Next up, we have the relay sensor. Think of it as like an on-off switch. Let's say you've made a system where the electricity current will go off in two directions, but you only want one of the directions to be currently active. You can place this down on one of the sides and actually deactivate it altogether as shown here. You can reactivate this by interacting with the switch shown here. This tool has another use as well. If you've ever wanted to send a minecart in a certain direction by itself, you can do that. However, in order for this to work, you need to set up a remote sensor to give the track some power in order to get that vehicle moving, shown here. If that wasn't enough, we have one final tool to go over, the relay controller. There's a reason why I saved this one for last, and that's because I still don't fully understand its potential, but I do understand how to get it working. It has the ability to change the state of the relay sensor as the electric current is still currently happening. Let's use a basic example. So here I've created a simple contraption. As you see, I have a timer set up to go off every 10 seconds, it's running through a relay sensor which is currently turned off, so there's no power going to the lights. However, if I place the relay controller down next to the relay sensor, every time the electricity passes through the relay controller, it will change the relay sensor from on to off and vice versa. This is just a small little bit of its potential, and I can see so many other uses for this thing. And that just about wraps it up for all the new electrical tools coming in this update. However, I'm not done quite yet. I've been experimenting with this stuff for hours now and wanted to give you all some tips before you get started that will help you out in the long run. If you plan on creating a song with some note blocks like I did in Trailer 2, don't do what I did and make it one long straight line. Electricity does actually have a limit as to how far it can travel. If you create a long current and activate it, it will only go the distance of what was currently rendered in the game when the button was first pressed. This means it will eventually reach a point that wasn't rendered in in the first place, causing the electricity to just stop. Instead of making one long straight line of notes, make it more of like an S shape or a snake shape. Electricity travels diagonally. I know it doesn't seem like they are connected, but according to the game, if the corners of them are touching, the current will continue as shown here. There is also currently a bug with the engine where sometimes the light doesn't go away after it's deactivated. This has to deal with the chunks and I'm not quite sure why this is an issue. However, an easy way to get around this is just to destroy a block that is currently bugged in the lighting. And that about explains all the information you need to know in the upcoming electricity update. What do you think? Did all that information make your head explode? Are you hyped for the update? Let me know down in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching, Excel signing off.